good morning and welcome back to City Line. Uh, with me are two amazing women that I just want to sit in a coffee house with and just drink coffee forever and solve all the problems of the world. So I'm going to invite you to do that with me for the next 10 minutes or so. Please join me to talk about Domestic Violence Action Month with the Family Justice Center and our sister's house. Nadia Van Adder, you are the assistant director for our beloved Crystal Judson Family Judson Justice Center. There we go. Welcome. Thank you. Thank I you should see. say welcome back because I that smile right back at you. Kelly Robinson, executive director of our sister's house. You I have no I don't know I can't remember how long I've known you. But good it amount is, of years. It is it is <laughs> unbelievable yeah. how you grow. So thank you for finding your way back to the comfy couch. Thanks you for having me. All right, let's talk about this. So um, Kelly, why let's talk about the cultural specific domestic violence services that our sister's house um, deems important when when addressing domestic violence and intimate partner violence. Sure. What are those services? Sure, we provide domestic violence advocacy, legal services, case management, mental health, support services, support group. And it's important because black women, our experiences are different. Yes. Our, our experiences are different from yours and Nadia's as we move through this world. And black women are two times more likely to be killed than white women. We are 40% of black women are victims of domestic violence throughout their lifetime. So the services need to be specific. We don't fit into a one size fits all right. box. So no template, no template. And having advocates that look like our victims the belonging. Yes, yes, exactly. So given that you are constantly taking the temperature on a, on a per person per soul basis, how does the program evolve? We have to stay cutting edge. God, yes. We have to uh, make sure our services are trauma informed. We spent last year being learning to become culturally specific, trauma informed, victim centered advocates. We also are now all our advocates are certified in domestic violence danger assess to administer danger assessments. Wow. So we can quickly identify if clients are high risk and trying to put together that coordinated community response that we do in conjunction with the Family Justice Center. Which is, this this collaboration is a marriage made in heaven, exactly. a partnership made in heaven. Um, when, we, when we realize that domestic violence and also um, intimate partner violence, public health crisis, as it is, it breaks down in the relationship and it, it, it really helps us identify, is the conflict physical or is it emotional? So what are some of those trends that you see that are, are being, I guess, um, pinpointed by experts in making our assessment of domestic violence more complex? Because when you, the phrase intimate partner violence, mm -hmm. I thought I knew every phrase. Right. I didn't know that phrase. Right. Right, and there is a difference. So intimate partners are your, you know, yeah. relationships. My wife. But, right, exactly. Your wife, your, you know, naughtiest husband or boyfriend or, you know, significant right. other. But domestic violence is roommates. It's parent against child. It's any kind of living situation that's not intimate. Okay. So, yes. Oh, good, good definition. So now we move over to the Family Justice Center model and... Um, Nadia, what makes it unique in order to, I don't want to say deserve, but to, to take the level by which you are being handed off from our sister's house, you've got to have something really special to offer because they wouldn't partner with you if you didn't. Yeah, we, um, so the Family Justice Center model is a national model. And the idea is all about co-location and collaboration. And so you have to have community-based services and system-based services. So we physically share space with the sheriff's department and the prosecutor's office, but everything on our community side is strictly confidential. Mm -hmm. um, we've got over 35 co-located professionals and seven different agencies, one of which is our sister's house. Yes, yes. Um, and so this idea of collaboration and really being able to lean into that. Right. And that's something that both of our agencies have worked really hard for, not just you know, and how we hand clients off, right? But also how our teams, our teams do team building activities right. and different things like that to really build that relationship so that they feel comfortable reaching out to each other when they exactly. need support. 
October is, as both of you know, uh, Domestic Violence Month. Um, I always say Domestic Violence Action Month. Um, are there things that you would like to challenge our viewers to do for the month of October and beyond that will help us be a part of the solution? Yeah, I think the first thing is learning about those dynamics, right? When we think about domestic violence, sometimes we just think about the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So really getting to better understand those dynamics um, and challenge the social norms, you know, yes. how people talk about it, you know, be aware, are you, are you victim blaming or are you actually genuinely offering support? Right. And learn about resources in the community, ask those resources and agencies what would be supportive um, so that they're getting the support that they need. And that, that falls under a beautiful 10 ways you can help, which we've been showing the slides, um, because we can never get the word out enough as we continue to look at domestic violence and how we combat it. Um, last question for both of you. Um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody right now in your life if they were victims of a domestic situation? Kelly. That's a great question. I would first encourage them to get to a safe place, mm -hmm. reach out to one of a, a local organization. Our sister's house is available, uh, the Family Justice Center. Um, talk to with an advocate, s learn about the dynamics of domestic violence. A lot of times people don't even understand that they're in a domestic violence situation. Right. Our advocates will go through that process with you, do some safety planning, and figure out what your next steps are. Good advice. Nadia? I would say you're not alone. Yeah. And you don't deserve what's happening to you of just none of this is your fault right. and that there are places that want to support you. Absolutely. Um, real quick, thank yous. Our teams. Yes. Our teams yes. do really the hard, hard work. work. Yeah. And so they continue to show up every day. So a huge thank you to our teams um, and just those that continue to support us, yes. whether it's in big ways or little ways. Huge thank you to both of you and the teams that we could not get on this couch. Protect yourself, put your vest on, drink water, get some rest, because those capes that you have on your shoulders, they're heavy, but you do it so well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so Thanks. much, Amanda. You're welcome. Appreciate Jessica's over there in the City Line Comfort Cafe with some props. We're going to find out what Jessica has up her sleeve in just a moment. We'll be right back.